celebrities. There's a fact for you. Paired up with an expert. Well, like a girl's hands. <laughs> And a classic car. Give it some juice, Myrie, give it some juice. Their mission? To scar Britain for antiques. I'm brilliant at haggling. Who knew? The aim? To make the biggest <gasps> profit at auction. I can't believe that. But it's no easy ride. What's that smell? The clutch! Who will find a hidden gem? That's for the Art Deco, isn't it? Take the biggest <laughs> risk. It's half toy, it's half furniture. Will anybody follow expert advice? That's irrelevant. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. No! Put your pedal to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> Top dollar. Hang on to your sporrans. We're in Bonnie, Scotland. Yay! Ooh. With giants of the British music scene <laughs> and great mates, <laughs> Yolanda Brown. Okay. So fine. And Gareth Malone. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> it's Bunny Hop Central here. How are you finding the driving, Yolanda? You know, growing up, I wanted to be a Formula One driver. So this is ideal for you. Well, it was. Well, it was until you <laughs> until you broke the car. <laughs> oh. It's all good. <laughs> Choirmaster Gareth has propelled the British call scene to dizzying heights and is renowned for his skills of spreading the joy of singing to the masses. Well, I saw you first on television. You were in the on the gospel prom. Yeah. Lighting up the stage with your saxophone. <laughs> oh, bless. And that made me think I'd really like her to play on my Christmas album. The Christmas oh, came along. I love that studio. session. British jazz queen Yolanda is an award-winning <laughs> saxophonist and has toured the world with greats that include The Temptations. You know what, Yolanda? I want my antiques experts to look like an antique. <laughs> I want the bow tie, the, the, the trilby, the a, a, a tweed a cardigan. jacket, cardigan, yeah. yeah. I like that. And it's a, a good maybe tactic. kind of a really cut glass. British accent. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> Instead, Gareth, there's not a bow tie in sight with Antiques Big Guns, Raj Bisram <laughs> and David Harper. Maybe by the end of this road trip, who knows, we might be bringing out our own single. Yeah. What a boy band yeah. that would be. Yeah. yeah, the Buster Beat Dealers crew, hey? <laughs> They're in a 1960s Volvo P1800. This car, I love. You know why I love it? Because I know what you're going to say. Yeah, you do. Every, Go I mean, on. Anyone of a certain age yes, is yes. going to know because this car yeah. reminds me of the Saints. Do you know the tune? Dun, 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 dun. It's like I'm watching Roger Moore. It is, it is, isn't it? It just, <laughs> just takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe Gareth can help you with your pitch, Raj. Now, has Yolanda got control of the 1960s MGB? That's better. Yay! We're, we're good, we're good. Okay. Oh. No, it's not OK. I can't get into gear. I think I'm too far away from the, from the clutch. Oh. <laughs> that sounded really expensive. <laughs> yes. You just wait till it's your turn, Gareth. Without further ado, let the antiques festivities begin. We're limbering up for an auction finale in Newcastle, but before that thrill, we are touring the east coast of Scotland, starting off with a shopping bonanza in Edinburgh. Beautifully driven. Oh, thank you very much. It's not easy to get out of this car. <laughs> right, shall we? Thank you, old chap. Lovely. Courtyard Antiques lies tucked away down this cobble back street. It is glorious in here, isn't it? Spanning two floors, we have everything from a bear on wheels to curios covering antique, vintage and retro. And the fellas have already beaten them to it. Gareth and Yolanda each have £400. Now, what will pique Gareth's excitement? Raj, hello. Hello, Gareth. I'm Raj. Nice to meet Very you. Very nice to meet you. This is like my ideal day off, is to go around a place like this. So I, what would you wait. be looking for? I mean, obviously I like, you know, musical instruments, that sort of thing. I, I guess that. I really like 
old, old furniture, and, you know, old brown, sort of Victoriana, that kind of stuff. We're all pumped up and ready to go. Let's find Yolanda. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, you found me. I found you in this treasure trove. It is wonderful. I could wow. stay here all day. Have you been to a shop like this before? Very, it, my childhood is coming back. I remember going on camping trips and then going around shops, but not for a very long time, and oh. it just feels different now. There's a, there's oh. a lot of stories, memories, things you recognise. Well, <laughs> shall we take you on a bit of a nostalgic journey? Yes, let's see if please. we can find some stuff that relates to your childhood, but then more importantly, let's try and find something to make a bit That's of money. True. Oh, God, be careful! <laughs> no right. wonder you tripped in those old claw poppers. Now, do you like boxes? There's a couple of things where like notebooks, boxes that I just have lots of. I don't know what Do I'm you? doing with it. There's nothing in them. Which is your favourite? I think it would have to be this one. Yeah. So, like this detail and what do you call this? this well, that's different... inlay. So inlay. it's wooden inlay or mother of pearl in places. But yeah. if it's geometric in its inlay, then it's called parquetry. Oh. If it's very floral and organic in its inlay, then yes. it's marquetry. Okay. But that's a parquetry box. And you know, with a lock, so it would hold love letters and oh. you know, so I know how romantic is that. <laughs> Secret correspondence, you yes. know, important personal things. Absolutely. Where now they're just kind of relegated to boxes to put stuff in. <laughs> and because of that, they sadly don't command a high price anymore. Let's move on and find Gareth. What's this? It's the it's from Great Ormond Street. Okay. It is the ideal home electrical appliance. It's a it's Rogers Violet Ray yeah. high frequency ventilator. Well, it says it all on the ticket, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess you plugged yourself into this, yeah. and it vitalised you. Yeah, there we go. Wherever that goes, okay. <laughs> let's not ask. Let's not maybe. No, let's not ask on that one. Do they sell big market? <laughs> no. I can't, but I quite I'll like keep this looking. Sort of... you, you play with your vital Not even there. Okay. No, no, you can't persuade me. I'm off. It's from Great Ormond Street. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry, it's a no from us. Yep, best keep rummaging, boys. Hello, Yolanda. Oh, hello there, Gareth. Have you got your eye on the horse? Well, yeah, thinking about it. Thinking I, about think, it. I think you should be go the for best it. purchase, I think. I think it'd be really good. <laughs> I'd spend the whole 400 if I Oh, yeah. tactics. I yeah. see where you're going with it. I might get that horse for. 350. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Hope you win. You too. Yeah. Gareth, you tease. Hmm, what do we have here? Looks to be some sort of photograph of a church. Could it be choir related? Oh, I like these. I love old books. Look at that. It's the modern baker confectioner and caterer. It's an old cookery book. It's got lovely illustrations. Yeah, I could sort of see that in somebody's. I don't know, like on, on display. Yeah, I think that's quite a nice... Uh, it's a nice book and I think it's, you know, something that somebody would be interested in today. Yeah. But what would you pay for that? Wow. Go on, here we go. Let's... Pounds, not, not tens of no, pounds. No, no, pounds. If we got it for under a tenner... I do like that, look. A confectioner's artistic tea room. Yeah, is that nice? That's gorgeous, yeah. I can't believe he's going to want more than a tenner for that. No. There's a healthy market for old cookbooks. Collectors love the reflection of cooking styles and ingredients that have been forgotten about. Could be a goodie. It doesn't have a price, but that's one for the possibles. Now, where's Yolanda? I like this. David, I think I, think I found something. Oh, that is so what you. you. Think? I mean, I love games. You the do? Fact that this looks quite old, but it looks like quite in good condition, I think. It does, and it's got the box, but does it contain anything? Well, when I opened it, it's even got... I don't know if it's original, you tell me. Wow, so... But it's even got the little... It's a roulette, is it? Yeah. Look, it's got the little ball. It's got the it? little ball, and it's got rules. Is that, that's a good thing, right? That's if it's come with the original rules. Oh, my... Yes, of course. What's it called? Poulette. Poulette. Now, what's roulette. the difference between poulette and roulette? Well, I don't quite know. I don't know either. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's the difference. A roulette, obviously, is numbers and colours. Yes. That's, it's a bit like a, a, a Monopoly game, probably. It's, it's telling you what to do, so it's got a board and counters. This quirky board game could be from around the 1950s. I like it. How much? £35, though, do you think? Is that what it is? £35? Quid? Should we have it? It's my first purchase. Oh, I was fantastic. looking for a game, so it's I think fantastic. that's good. Perfect for you. 
That's a definite. Now, let's find Maestro Gareth. Well, this is right up your street, Gareth. Yes, isn't it? we're in the, in the music zone here. Yeah. Look at this. I mean, I don't know, I'm in mean, a kind of oh, I western. Like it. You know? yeah. <laughs> I can hear Ennio Morricone going on. So I don't know, they're, they're quite fun. I could sort of sit on a musician's wall. I think that's quite a nice looking thing, actually. It's, it's... The way you were playing it, yeah. I'm guessing it's from America. It's got that feel, You know, that it? sort of a... I can't like get a... A... American Indian sound. Yeah. That's the way you were playing it. I feel like that's got a sort of ring of authenticity to it, although someone has painted it, and that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Is that original paint? Sure, I mean, we could ask the owner yeah. what he knows about it. Yeah, maybe he's got some data. Maybe he's got some more information. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's call it. him. Uh, Lewis? Let's get dealer Lewis over to find out more. Can I ask you about I this item? What do you know about this? It is all original. The paint would have been taken from iron ore or, or something. And oh, the, mixed the paint's it. original? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I, I, would, I would guess it's from the 40s or 50s. The drum is priced at £135. It's not the most popular thing in Scotland, so you could have it for 50 quid. Maybe if we ask how much... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I... Yeah, you saw something else, I it? did find this. I wonder if you might throw that in. What about seven? How about six? I wish I'd said eight. <laughs> six, yes, OK. We'll do it for six. Yeah. 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 All right, done. I'll take the book. Now, what's he done with that photo? I was being strategic here, Raj, and I picked this up unbeknownst to you. We are going to Newcastle, aren't we? This is uh, St Mary's Church in Gateshead. Somebody might have been married. Have I gone crazy? Is this well, one not that's necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, it's going to come down to. I mean, if it was a couple of pounds, then we could put it with the book. If, if it was four pounds, then that would be a nice round sum. I, I could go to it. Yeah. Four pounds for a little little memento yeah. of Gateshead. Yeah, all right. I'll give you four quid for that. Ten pounds for the combination of the baking book and Gateshead photograph, and fifty pounds for the Native American drum. Three very different items, and you still have three hundred and forty pounds to play with. Good work, Gareth. Back inside, Yolanda already has one game as a hot possible. What else can she find? Just spotted some Meccano. I remember playing with Meccano growing up. I loved it. Yeah. But I mean, how old would this have been? Let's have a look. Well, that's that's early 20th century. Looking at the box. Yeah, 1914. 1914, the beginning of the First World War. Can we? Did you play with Meccano as a kid? I played with Meccano all the time. Did I you? absolutely loved it. Would you be interested in buying that? I mean, it's 120 pounds. It's a bit steep. Do you think? Makes good money. Does it really? Old Meccano. There are people out there. You had to think more than with Lego. Yes, of course. You know? Oh. Oh. Is there a tray below? I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. You've got cogs. Is the screws. Oh, I, I love this. Well, I, mean... I wonder what they make. Is that for the whole lot or just that? There's no prices on it. It might be for the Ooh. whole lot. I can't open that one. No. I'm guessing it will be a six. It might be. If it's for this the... This has got instructions in Oh, the don't... You're getting me excited <laughs> now. If it's for the whole thing, then you don't even we need could... to ask me twice. Well, I, I think when, when we buy the, the game, which we're going to, yes. let's ask him. If it's for the whole lot, let's see if we could do a deal. Oh, I've got chills. Oh, I've got, oh. I've got the bug. Uh. I've got the bug. <laughs> I think you do. Let's track down Lewis to chat Dosh. Oh, hi, Lewis. Hi, Yolanda. Oh, thanks for having us. No, it's been great. So, I found a couple of things that I like. The first was the Poulette game, the complete set in, yeah. in the box. It's got 35 on it, but I'll do 25. And the other thing was you've got a, a set of Meccano, and the price tag says 120. Is that for all three boxes? No. <laughs> Good try, Yolanda. The, the blue one's older than the red ones, and it has 120 on it, so the blue one I would do for um, um, 80. Would you be happy at 70? Yes. <laughs> oh, there we go, we're done. Oh, so the Poulet and yeah. the Meccano, I'll definitely go for both of those. Nifty work there, Yolanda, you charmer. £25 for the Poulet game and £70 for the early Meccano set. Yolanda now has £305. Meanwhile, how are the fellas in the saintly Volvo? 
I went and immersed myself as a teacher in a, in a secondary school. And I have to say, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's all, it was really personally challenging, but it, it, it was a worthwhile thing to do. And this was the success of that, I think, has set, set the rest of my career off. Our groundbreaking choir master and Raj are travelling to the ancient village of Temple in Midlothian. The chaps are going to learn about Scotland's first national instrument. You may be surprised to hear it's not the bagpipes. Legendary and world-renowned harper Alison Kinnaird knows the origins of this beautiful instrument. I just love the sound of the harp, but I can't tell one from another. In Scotland, we've got some of the oldest evidence for three-cornered harps. Uh, certainly in the, the British Isles. Really? I had no idea. Yes, well, it's conveniently carved on stone, <laughs> on the Pictish stones uh, on the east coast of Scotland. And they date back until the, the 7th century. No, that's, really? uh, You know, that's a long time. Long before the lilting bagpipes, the Scottish harp was the instrument of choice for the courts of Scottish kings and chieftains. This instrument is the wire-strung harp, and this is one, the one that really should be called the Clarsach, because that is the Gaelic name for a harp. Clarsach. And this is the harp of the Gaelic-speaking areas in particular. Could you play this? You just get a mush of sound, you yeah. see, so you, you ha actually have to learn. Ah, oh. Stopping techniques. Difficult. But I can sort of hear the metallic ring of the brass. It sounds like church bells almost. The medieval harper was the A-lister of his day. His very presence at an event emphasised nobility with a capital N. It was very much a professional's instrument. So it was the instrument of the aristocracy and of professional harpers. Is that because it's difficult to play and you have to... It build an instrument, so that's expensive. Well, and, and also the, the repertoire was... Uh, it went very far back into, you know, the bardic poetry. Mm. The harpers would have accompanied the bards. The skilled and revered harper also shared an incredible common trait. It is quite noticeable that a lot of the harpers were blind, which seems kind of surprising because you know, this is not an easy instrument to play when you can't see what you're doing. If you couldn't see, it must have limited your life chances. It, um, it must have been desperate, and quite a lot of people were blinded by smallpox in those days. So I suppose they, if they had a choice to go for the highest status instrument, they yeah. would have done that. You know, that would have been the sensible thing to do. After the Jacobite uprising, many ancient Highland traditions were abolished. The households of the chieftains were destroyed and the few that remained couldn't afford to employ harpers. The harp tradition was kind of broken and just at that point, the armies were taking off with the bagpipes. Right. You know, so, it's a stirring sound. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not surprised really that the harp just faded slightly from there. I'm just imagining the serried ranks of the kilted Scottish army with you at the front with your harp, it's not, quite, it's not going to work. You're not going to follow this. That is just not practical. The bagpipes were the perfect instrument of battle. They were portable and ideal for stirring the passions of war. By the end of the 19th century, the Clarsach had become associated with the Celtic revival and the burgeoning interest in Gaelic language and culture. Today, it encompasses Scottish identity and history. Is it ever popular in, in Scotland as it was? Oh, absolutely more so, in fact. Uh, when I started playing, there were maybe six people playing in public. Mm. And now, I mean, the place is hoaching with harp players, <laughs> I'm glad to say. And uh, there are harp makers who are making harps. Yeah. And they have a waiting list, which is a very good sign. So well. alive, alive and kicking is a Absolutely, tradition. Absolutely, yes, yes. Well, it's part of the tradition. Alison is one of the most accomplished Clarsac players in the world. Who better to give Gareth his first lesson? You're going to start off on something. Because <laughs> I'm simple. Quite, quite gentle and simple. Yes. And uh, it's a lullaby. With the harp, you always put your finger on the string mm. and then play. 
can hear the difference in the tone. Oh, that's right. Now that's our first phrase. It goes like this. C, D, C, E. Either side of black. Two fingers on. Same ones. Oh. Bravo, Gareth. Another instrument to add to your repertoire. Now, let's seek out Yolanda and David. Do you collect anything? I do. I collect Rubik's cubes. You do I, not? I absolutely love any... Oh! <laughs> You're working up beautifully. I feel very comfortable here. Rubik's cubes. Rubik's cubes. I, I love them. So it means you've actually got more than one Rubik's oh, cube. Oh, gosh, I've got about 25, 30. <laughs> Nothing like a good old game from the 80s. We're zooming to the village of Dander Hall, just outside Edinburgh. Well, this looks very exciting. It's a bit of, bit of everything here. Right, let's get let's out. Do it. There are a number of independent dealers here. Thank you. But we're going for a nose in Chapman Billy's Antiques. Yolanda has 305 big ones to spend. And there's plenty of room to explore in here. No Rubik's Cubes, though, Yolanda. What have you got there? I mean, there's some amazing detail. And this side caught me by surprise, make me feel okay. a little bit... <laughs> does it? <laughs> like, yeah, it does. What does that mean? <laughs> it reminds me of a muscle. I think it's the colour of it. OK. It reminds me of, a, like, a mollusk. <laughs> it sort but, of is, though, isn't it? It, it is, sort well, of it is. really is. Yeah. <laughs> But then, on the other side, I just saw all this detail. I mean, it's basically so... a big cameo. So it's carved into a shell. Right. It's a conch shell, isn't it? Yes, it is a conch. So this is 1930s, 1940s wiring, and probably a, it's a continental fitting, so right. it probably originated in France, Okay. I would guess, or, or maybe likely Italy, because the Italians are known for carving shells yep. in cameos like that. But highly unusual as a lamp. This type of conch is commonly found in the Mediterranean. It's in the style of a grand tour scene, a popular souvenir in 19th century Italy. You put a little bulb in there and illuminate that yeah. on a side table, and it's small, Yolanda, it's small. True. Small things in this business are very good news. It's priced at 20 whole pounds. You're bringing me round. Good, You're I love it, and I think at 20 quid, it is so for nothing. Yes. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes. Defo done. Defo done. Defo yes. done. Yes. Sold. Sold. Should we go and find I think Billy? it's Billy. Let's go and find Billy. Lovely. Give him 20 quid. <laughs> Watch out, Billy. Here they come. Oh, hi, Billy. Hi. I found hey, Billy. something. Oh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, the cameo on the shell. Oh, the conch shell. Uh, yeah, yeah, the conch shell with the, the light. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not yeah. even gonna haggle with you. Okay. No. Twenty pounds is a steal. Okay. Um so I'm gonna put two tens down here. One by down. Anything else? It's not unusual. Oh, can you hear that? Uh, this must remind you of getting onto the stage. Like the Pied Piper, I have to go here. <laughs> Things no one Oh, need. wow. Yolanda is drawn to Gazmo's records and a bit of Sir Tom. You don't hear that anymore. Everything's so crisp and tinny yeah. and crystal clear. But actually, I miss that warmth. Yeah, people I'd love, do. I'd love to play my records on exactly. this. Exactly. The radiogram is having a resurgence in popularity and is the ultimate in granny chic for your home. It's a lovely thing. So date-wise, what are you thinking? Well, I'm th I think I would have seen this in my grandma's living room. Yeah. Like, kind of 60s yeah. when they would have come about. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. This made in the 60s out of veneer yeah, is worth it's... much more money <laughs> than a Georgian side it's table. It's so true. Cabinet. It's so it's true. I it puts it. a smile on my face. It does. It really does. I love it. The sound is great. I would put it in my house. Price, please. Let's have a look. Go on. 130. 130, OK. The market is strong for them, there's no doubt about yes. it. But not everywhere. Yes. So when it goes into auction, if you haven't got the people that are looking it's for it, it's going to bomb and make <laughs> nothing, no. right? So we want it. I do want it, yeah. How much are we going to pay for it? 80. Oh, could we? Oh, would you bid them 80? 
Oh, I'd love Go to. Go on, I'll leave it to you. Because it all goes wrong. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah, remember that. When it goes wrong, <laughs> it's down to you. Let's get Dealer Gary over. Gary. Yeah. Hi, Gary. Hi. Can I speak to you about this amazing ripple player? It drew me in. It's a really nice, clean example of the 1960s. Yeah. yeah. So we love it, Gary. Yeah, we have to get down to brass tacks. How much Yolanda. do you love it? I love it a lot. <laughs> I think it's 130 on the yeah. ticket. 130 on the ticket, yeah. How about 100 quid and I'll throw you in a couple of records? Let's do it. Let's do 100 quid. Let's Thank you, Gary. Thank you very, very much. Come on, give a it a blast. It's a celebration, on. I tell you. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, yes! Come on, baby. Come on, Tom. Belt it out. <laughs> I'm surprised he can dance in them. A cool 100 on the hipster radiogram. I don't think I can watch David's dad dancing anymore. Yolanda has £185 remaining. And now that melodic pie concludes the shopping. Uh, Yolanda and I go back a couple of years, we, well, quite a few years, actually. I saw her on TV, so I got in touch with her and got her to play on one of my albums. And, uh, yeah, we've been friends ever since. I remember driving up to Scotland in the tour bus, sort of a uh, uh, minivan. In those, and you were the driver. Bus, and I drove the full eight hours. Did you? I actually really love just the open road, being yeah. fun with the vehicle. It's just relaxing to me. Speaking of relaxation, nighty night. Good morning! We're roaming in the gloaming. Well, I'll take the high road, you take the low road, and I'll be in Scotland for you. My parents washing up some. Oh, really? Good choice. I don't want to make you feel bad, but our stuff is brilliant. Really? Oh. You're really that confident? Oh, I mean, Yolanda. Oh, wow. I think we might set the auction house on fire <laughs> when we bring I'm, our ob I objet in. <laughs> I am a little bit nervous now. <laughs> it's all good fun, Yolanda. Now, where's the mighty Volvo? Have you got any idea what the problem is? Because to me, it all yeah. looks like one big problem. OK, yeah, I, I do know. It's not working. <laughs> You're a genius, David. Well, only one thing for it. <laughs> this looks like it could be a long walk. Could be, couldn't it? <laughs> I'm just glad I've got the right shoes. Yeah, I've got flip-flops. Is that what you call them? I was hoping for a bit of summer weather. As the boys braved the lashing rain, Gareth and Yolanda have made it to the Fife town of Inverkeithing. Right, Yolanda, let's see what you've got. OK, I can't wait to see what you've got. Oh, it's, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Right, I'm going to do the latch. Oh! Gareth and Raj have spent £60 on the combo lot of the church photo. I love old books. Look at that. And the 20th century baking book. And this Native American drum. I can hear it. I can hear That's it. That's copyright. Tenton. I can't do that. Yeah. It's, I just think it's got a lovely tone and, and yeah. it, you know, as a musician, it, I just thought I'd have that for something. So you're thinking the buyer would be a musician that likes the sound rather than the story? That's, what, that's my worry. You've gone right to my, my, my worry is that no-one's going to buy it because it no, doesn't No, no, a look musician right would buy it. A musician would buy it. Gareth has £340 left for today. Thank you so much. Yolanda, meanwhile, has spent £215 on the poulette game. Oh, that is so you. I mean, I love games. The 1960s radio gram, the early 20th century conch lamp, and this early game of Meccano, giving Yolanda a remaining sum of £185. 1914. How much <laughs> did you pay for that? Well, price tag, yeah. 120 Whoa. Got it for 70 Haggle much? Do you not think that someone's going to buy this? Um, may the best person win, Yolanda. <laughs> the game's not over. I can't believe you did like the Ricardo, though. It's a bit dilapidated, isn't it? Yeah, that's 1914. Incredible, Yolanda. They're both going for a gander in here. Fleming's Furniture and Antique Centre. 
It's packed to the gunnels with all kinds of fancy things. Loving the old ginger beer bottles. Yolanda has been splashing the cashola. She has just under £200 left. Ah, <laughs> David, I found you. Oh. oh, I've been waiting for you. So you haven't been working? No. You're just playing, but I've this been looks... Cool. Isn't it good? Right, bring it on. Are Can you we ready? play? Yes. Go on, Yolanda, give him a good thrashing. Wow! Oh, oh, I see! No! No! I see. No! No! I no. don't he's stuck! It's like a youth club in here. <laughs> Elsewhere in the shop, it's far more grown up. Gareth is minted. He's got £340. That's some shirt, Raj. Oh, my gosh. Gareth, can you see that green pig? Yes. It's a OK, now... Pig. But what's quite special about it is that it's whims. And it's very... Whims, whims yeah. It's, you can see W-E-M-Y-S-S. -S. It's really, really collectible. But actually, whims were... It was produced in Kirkcaldy in the late 19th century, and today this is a highly sought-after Scottish pottery, and there's a huge market for these colourful cats and pigs. 280? Yeah. We're looking, obviously, to get it for a, a lot less than that, but I think it's a really lovely thing. It's just an ornamental pig. And it's also... The damage, one of his foots. Oh, is it? There's a little bit of repair work that's happened there. Does that matter? Yes, it does. Right. I think we need to speak to the owner about that. OK. OK? Yes, but definitely, because he made, cause he hasn't put it on the ticket, is she? I do like him. While the boys find out about the green pig, what about your ladder? It's got hallmarks. David, have, have a look at this. I saw hallmarks, so I thought that must mean a good thing, right? I hope they're silver hallmarks. <laughs> well, it says on here, unusual antique silver wishbone sugar tongs. Sounds good. 1920. Oh. Edinburgh. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and it says here at the end, a rare piece, a exclamation rare. mark. Oh, a rare piece with an exclamation right? mark. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Right. Now, that is for a very posh tea party. Right. So you invite all your friends around and you want to show off. Yeah. What are you going to use to yeah. pick up the sugar? You're not going to use your grubby no. fingers. That's or common. a teaspoon. No, uh, please. Uh, you wouldn't please. do that, Yolanda. No. You use those. The sugar tongs are by esteemed mid-19th-century silversmiths, John Thompson and Sons. Edinburgh Hallmark is much rarer okay. than, say, a Birmingham. Yep. And it doesn't matter where they're sold, Edinburgh is always sought after. Scottish silver is always sought after. OK. They are priced at £54. Can I get a deal? You'll get or something. That... Should... I should just ask. What I would do with this is ask for a discount, mm -hmm. take the discount and buy them. Lovely, I'm going to take all of this. Let's go and do a deal. Let's go and do a deal. Lovely. Let's chat to the lady in charge, Sandra. Hello. Good afternoon. How can I help you? I would love to purchase this very unusual wishbone, please. It's on here as £54. I really love it. Is there anything you can do for me? Oh, 45. Would that be good for you today? Just consult my expert. Okay. <laughs> 45 would be wonderful, thank That's you lovely. very, thank very you. much. Nifty negotiating, Yolanda. All shopped up. Oh. Did it. We've got you it all. are getting better and better. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, back inside, how are we getting on with the pricey pig? Did you get to speak to the owner about yes, this? Yes, I certainly have, and he says he understands it's got a wee bit damaged to it and it has been restored, so he would give it to you for £50 today. Is that OK? Wow, that's a £230 reduction. It is, it is. But if he didn't know that it was... If he thought this was in perfect condition, then he's about right at the retail oh, price. Wow. So, so the damage does make a difference. Now, I think at that price, we, we may have a chance. I think the pig's fun. Yes, there's a bit of damage, but he's come down so much. Are you a gambling man? Yeah, let's just go for the pig. Fantastic. Let's go. Thank In that you. case, we will take the pig. Hopefully, the pig. thank you very thank much. Thank you very much indeed. Fantastic. Wow, what a deal. That snazzy buy means Gareth has £290 left in the kitty. Gareth, I told you, no car. Broken down, so... You've got your walking shoes on. I've got on. my walking boots on. Come on, let's go. Please stop raining. <laughs>
Yolanda and David have made it to the town of Anstruther in Fife and are pointed offshore for a boat trip to the Isle of May. Oh, this is lovely. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, I can't wait. They're taking to the high seas for a nautical adventure. Come on, Roy, give it a bit of welly. Full power, full belt. <laughs> what a couple of thrill seekers. Here, on the mouth of the Firth of Forth, lies an island just one mile long by one-third of a mile wide. I've got a new hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's blown off. <laughs> Today, the Isle of May is swamped by the fluttering wings of seabirds, but this tiny island has a surprising and varied history. Wow. It's so warm now it's as well. It's beautiful. I think I would live on this island. I think I would too. Gulls and all. <laughs> yeah, just get some <laughs> earplugs. <laughs> Conservationist Bex Utram lives and works here for seven months of the year and knows the island inside out. Hi, Bex. Thank you Hello. for having us here on the Isle of May. It is beautiful. It is. And, and just as we were coming in, we saw all of the amazing creatures. Can you tell us a bit more about this island? The, the island's kind of it's got a rich history. So we've got um, the old Christianity, so that dates back yes. to the 7th century. Cool. So connected to Lindisfarne, a little yeah, further down yeah, the coast. Yeah. So that takes us back, you know, knocking on the, what, 1,500 years, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, 7th yeah. century, yeah. yeah, it was the first records. Um, St. Ethanad came out here and then uh, the monks um, built the priory. So, yeah, there used to be 10 monks that used to live out here. Right. And people used to come and do pilgrimages and come over here and get healed. But It was the custom to build monastic settlements on small islands. The Isle of May was the perfect holy retreat. The Firth of Forth was a busy shipping channel by the 17th century. The island was the perfect spot for some groundbreaking design in Scottish seafaring. Just as we were coming in, we saw a sort of a white castle-like looking building. What was that? Uh, so that's Scotland's first lighthouse, so that's the beacon. And so that's at the top of the island there. So that was, yeah, built in 1636. Wow, that is early, uh, isn't it? Yeah, so it used to be three storeys high and it was a coal brazier on top that they used to light right. and, yeah. Considered one of the finest lights of its time, it was King Charles I that granted the patent for a beacon to be built there. Today, the island is a national nature reserve. In summer, the rocky cliffs here heave with over 200,000 nesting seabirds. The startling diversity makes it crucial for seabird conservation. Despite being the end of the breeding season, we're going to try and see if we can spot a puffin. Do you want to take a seat, guys, and right. we'll yeah. see if this we can the spot any puffins? <laughs> so, yeah, just this whole area here is just full of puffin burrows. They'll arrive here in mid-March, and then they'll find their burrow, same burrow each year. But, yeah, come back I, to I my holiday that home. mind boggling Yeah, 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 it is. Conservation here is crucial, as a recent study reports the number of breeding seabirds in Scotland has declined by almost half since the 1980s. Although hardy and robust, the puffin is extremely vulnerable to the threat of climate change. They'll feed on sand deals and sprats, so they're a cold water species. So as the sea temperature rises, they'll move um, and around here, we're going to be more of a temperate um, water, so... Right, so, so they have to travel further to, to find the food source. Yeah, so, so when they're here breeding, they'll have to travel further and make more journeys, so they're going to expend a lot more energy um, than they would usually. From monastic retreat at the site of Scotland's first lighthouse, it's now a welcome haven for seabirds. So if you can do me a favour on your way back, yeah. can you release this little guy? A puffling. So this is a puffling. Oh, my Come goodness on. me. Every morning we do a little walk around all the buildings and the walls and things because as they're leaving at night, right. they get stuck. Well, they come across the walls. Oh, I yeah. see. They just can't get over the walls. Yeah, they're trying to get down to the sea and they just get stuck in the walls. Can you explain exactly how we're supposed to release him? Yeah, if you just take it out of the bag and if you just keep its wings tucked in like that and then just pop them over the side. And just drop them in the water? Just drop it in the water. Okay. Yeah. 
And this will be the first time that this puffling's ever seen water. Oh, wow. wow. So it's good. you'll see that instinct here, yeah, where it'll just know how okay. to, to yeah. swim, to dive. And off we go with our precious cargo. Thanks, Bex. All Thank right. you, Bex. Bye. 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 Oh, you, Landry, I love your face, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> this is an amazing experience. Let's savour it. it. How are you feeling about this? Well, I'm going to just be real with you. I've only ever held a puppy before. Oh, really? So I am a little bit nervous, but I can't be as nervous as this little guy. Oh, you've got him beautifully. That's it. You've got him. Oh, Hello. my gosh. Well done, you. Oh, oh do we have perfect. to? You are... That Look, is there's the water. We've got some friends out there. OK, ready, first David? time ever. I'm ready. Let's do it. OK. It's the water. Oh, I don't let him go. <laughs> okay, Puffy. Just going to drop him in. Good, good speed. Go on then. Whoa! Oh. Look at him. Bye, Puffling. Amazing experience. Well done, you. Oh. Now, where the heck are Gareth and Raj? Oh, well, it's been a good day. Yeah. I mean, what a. What a sight. Well, you say a good day. We've lost our car. That's, right? That part's not so good. We've, we've a bit got lost going for a walk, but look where we've ended up. And we bought a broken pig. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a good day yeah. on the road trip. The chaps are on their way to the town of Dunfermline in Fife. Here in the town's heritage quarter, we're heading to the secret door. It's brimming full of curios and lovely things. Gareth has a bulging wallet, you know. He has £290. Ooh, I like that little combo set up. There was a concert that I did and I was singing. I was singing tenor and it was a piece by Haydn. And it was, I was in a beautiful big church and I sat, I had this curio or something, some big sort of classical moment. And I just remember the sound travelling out and, and I remember walking home and thinking, yeah, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. That was the change because I'd been toying with drama and various other things. How old just were you then? 21, I think. Now, what are we going to spend all that money on? Gareth. Hmm? That's never a spoon, is it? Yeah, you're... you're very sharp, aren't you're you? You're about to tell me this okay. is a special spoon. Where are we going for the auction? We're going to Newcastle. This is a Newcastle hallmark. Really? And it's dated 1801. 1801, yeah. that's a 220-year-old spoon. Yeah. And it looks like new. They're nice things. And, of course, you know, they fit in with exactly where we're going, so these could definitely be a possibility. Well... It's a lovely shape, isn't it? It's very... Uh, it, this is an elegant spoon, sir. Yeah. The silver serving spoons are unpriced, but they are defo hot contenders. What have yeah. we here? What do you think of these? I kind of love them. I, I mean, they're a little glimpse into childhoods of 100, what, 100 years ago? Or? Well, I don't, I'm not sure about that, you know. I think these probably are mid-20th century. I'm not sure. We might have to speak to the owner about these. Yeah. But they're lovely decorated. They're little children's toys, aren't they? I, I mean, they've so. got age to them because there's, there's lots of damage. These are just so decorative. Look at the artwork that's gone into those. Those are hand-painted. These are hand-painted. Where's it from? To be honest, I'm going on not the animals so much, but the base and the wheels, mm. and they tell me possibly India. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I think so. But the work that's gone into it, they're beautiful. They're unusual. They're very different. Mm. And depending on the price, they could fly. This colourful little duo don't have a price ticket. Is it a cat? It's a tiger, yeah, it's a isn't tiger. it? It's a tiger, it's a tiger, it's a tiger. Yeah, you're right, what am I saying? Cat. <laughs> this, is a, this is a beast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I like him a lot. And this, what is this? Like a serpent, it's a mythical well, creature. Yeah, this it? is a mythical creature, isn't it? Well, you know what, Yolanda's gone for toys. Well, let's beat yeah. her at her own game. Like it. Let's call Stuart in, shall we? Let's do it. Let's find owner Stuart to strike a deal. Hi there. Hi. Um, well, we found this fellow. Great. Yeah. And his, his little partner. The... He's got a friend, doesn't he? Yeah. Any idea what 
this is? I mean, this is obviously a tiger. Do you know anything about these? We think that they're Indian, some form of Indian wooden toys uh, from at least sort of mid-century. OK. The lady we got them from, her father served in India. Provenance. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. OK. What are you saying for price? For the pair of those, we're asking £150. Okay. I'm looking at you, Raj. You're looking at me. I'm looking at me. OK, well, you've also, I'm not looking at me. Uh, Stuart, you've also yep. got a pair of spoons with Newcastle Hallmarks. All right, yes, yeah, so one. Uh, yep. OK. Uh, and what are you looking for for those? Uh, we could do those for £70 for the pair of spoons. If we buy the both, can you do a little bit more? We could do the lot for 200 Who does that say? Do you know, I think that's absolutely fair. Two hundred. I think that's good. a really... Yeah. All right. Let's we have a deal. It's a deal. Let me get the money. Thank Hang you on. very much. Thanks, Stuart. £60 for the 19th century pair of silver spoons and £140 for the early 20th century children's toys. Good work. Can you believe it? The shopping is now finito! Now, I spy Yolanda and David. I've got something for you. I've got a present. Really? Yeah, for you. From really? me? Yeah. It's under your seat. Go on, have a delve under. How did you do that? Oh, well. <laughs> I thought it was something you bought in the antique shop behind my back. <laughs> oh, look at that. Check Bricks. that out. I love so it. How thoughtful, David. Time for some shut eye. Howdy doody. We're viewing the auction showdown in Swindon. feeling. I'm strangely nervous, are you? You know, I'm more nervous since I opened the boot. I was so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I've made you nervous. <laughs> Until I opened the boot and your face said it all, really. Well, I think those games were a very <laughs> strong choice. <laughs> he really doesn't like them, does he? <laughs> the Fab Four are at the beautiful Lydiard House, a great one listed Palladian masterpiece. Here they come. Hello. You Here we are. Hello. Hi. Right, well, good timing and just in time. Oh. It's just oh. about to start. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's get going. Come on, Yolanda, we're on this side. Oh. Yeah, and Gareth, we're on the winning table. After a swirl around Edinburgh and Fife, we're in Swindon in Wiltshire, while the big bag of antique delights have travelled to Newcastle City. Home to Thomas N. Miller. Today, it's open to bids, both in the room and to an online audience. Gareth went for it and splurged £310 on five lots. What's making auctioneer Guy Macklem giddy with excitement? The pig is a nice object. Uh, Weemsware always sells well. It's highly collectible. Perhaps it might tip £100 plus. Yolanda spent £260 on five lots. What's your fave, Guy? The silver sugar tongs are in good condition. They're nicely, clearly hallmarked. Nice quality. Silver always sells well. Um, these should do OK, I think, today. Here's hoping. Back to Lydiard House. What a location, eh? Oh, Welcome to house. my house. Yeah. Oh, stop it! <laughs> you just pulled up the car at the front there. Yeah. <laughs> no. It so was, Yolanda. It really is. It suits us. It really does, yeah. It's the winners. Tough. The winners. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Don't, you're not going to take that, are you? No, I'm not going to take no, that. I don't, I don't, we're just quietly confident. We're not braggers. This is true. Oh, yeah. well, no, we're braggers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you speak for yourself, David. <laughs> Gareth's first with his early 20th century baking book and the local Gateshead Church photo. Well, this is the, the modern baker confectioner's caterer, as you can see. It's a, <laughs> it's a book. Uh, it's Why an old did you book. Pick that book. It's got a sort of, what did we say, Art Deco? Art Nouveau. Art, Art Nouveau, Nouveau yeah, cover. Yeah, right. Ten quid, no money. 25 is the big oh. score. Oh. 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 Payments 25 pounds, no. 30 in the room. 25 here, all done. 25, you're all out in front. Sold to the net. Good work. Baking is super trendy. Great start, Gareth. Good. Yes. Good. Well done. Wow. Fifteen pounds. Oh. Fifteen pounds, just like that. What oh. a good start. That's that right? Unbelievable. Yeah. I could, you could live off that. That's you could, if you could do that on everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm a genius. <laughs> Yolanda's early twentieth-century conch lamp. 
what I had to do to convince Yolanda I know. to just like it a little bit. But I mean, I it, it gave me the shivers to that. To the... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if that's what that's what it was doing to her. I bid fifty pounds for it. Oh, 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 it oh my god! Unusual. Hard to find these. I've got it's hard to find. Come on. Come on. Sixty-five pounds offered all day. Come on. on Come net. on. We're up to sixty-five pounds. Keep going, net. At sixty-five pounds, <gasps> we sell seventy bid. Yes. Yeah. And again, internet. Go on. Good. Forward. Good. Seventy-five. Forward. Seventy-five pounds offered. Still out in front. Come on. Buy here at seventy-five. Come on, more. Last call online. This is your last chance. At seventy-five pounds, it will go. What a stonker of a profit. Yes! Well done, well done. Wow. How much is that in there? 75. Yeah. So you made what in the world? That's, That's a, a good really result. Really good profit. Well good done. result. Right, let's get the rhythm going with Gareth's early 20th century Native American drum. I think it actually is Cherokee. You've just that, made that up. That is, I, just I can tell. Uh, no, it's. Gareth recognised it straight away. Are you blaming Gareth? <laughs> oh, I see what he did. Good one. There. Good one, Raj. 25, 35. Oh. 35 all out in oh, front. Wow. In advance of 35 pounds, a good buy. Get the hammer support. down. At 35 pounds for the lot, then are we done? Oh. Last chance in front. At 35, we sell. What a shame. But there's plenty more to go. All our profits gone. Which oh. airport do you think that came from? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. David, you cheeky blighter. Let's see how the vintage poulette game fares. Well, I've lost all my confidence now. I think this is going to go to, like, 120. <laughs> <laughs> it's like giving in already. <laughs> Come on. Go, go, go. No, we're going to bring you. Oh, so taxi confident. from the load. <laughs> I'm bid £10 straight away. Oh, oh, oh I've... Ten. In advance. No. Come Don't do that. Come along, internet. Just wait. Thinking just wait. It, Think shortly. about it. Come on. To come, by. come on. In advance, even with the original instructions. Oh. Bid ten pounds. This will sell. It's you didn't say the instructions. It's all done. Poulette hasn't quite caught on in the 21st century. Oh, disaster! Oh, no. Poulette. He Sorry. needed. To, he Sorry. needed. Sorry, was that? Ten pounds. <laughs> he oh, needed to say shame. original instructions. You up, oh, what a crushy <laughs> shame, you know. Oh, that's awful. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. Ah. The rare and very green Weems pig is next from Gareth. Is there a crack down the ear? No, there's no crack. No, yeah, there's no, no crack, crack down the ear. It is good. The ear is good. cracked. There is a bit of crackling going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> crackling. Oh, he's been dying for that one. I'm bid hundred pounds for it straight away. Oh. <laughs> Ten pounds off. Right. Long internet. Where's one twenty? Right. Thinking about it. I've got one hundred and ten. Advance then at one hundred and ten. Last call internet. This is your last chance. At one hundred and ten, got to go. Now we're talking. You're back in the game, Gareth. Oh, yeah. well, done. Well, done. Back <laughs> well done. Back in the game. Back in the game. Well That's done. That's really good. Yolanda's solid silver sugar tongs are up for grabs. Collectors of Scottish silver are international. Oof. But yes. do they need sugar tongs? Were you taking some sugar? You would have sugar tongs. Well, I'm a sophisticated kind of guy. <laughs> you obviously. would have wishbone sugar tongs. <laughs> you can see by my hat. <laughs> 40 bid, 45. Come on. In advance, 45 pounds offered in silver. Come on, that's... Hard to come by. In advance in the room, at 45... No, Don't do it. Chance. Don't no, do it. On. At 45, we sell. That's unexpected. They were a good thing, Yolanda. We got out of that. It could have been worse. No, but they're, they're hurt by that, Gareth. You can tell that, that that was a kick in the guts for them. It was. It's a bad day. Yeah, it's a bad day for them. Never mind. Oh, Never mind. No, someone got a <laughs> Such <steal>. sincerity. <laughs> the 19th century spoons with the hallmark local to the sale room are next from Gareth. As a former percussionist, I, I did want to play them. Oh. But um, Raj said it was not a good thing to do with the silver spoon. No. <laughs> I didn't get to test the tone. The tone. <laughs> I'm bid 50 twice, 55. 55 against you. Oh, come on. Newcastle silver at 55 pounds for the lot. Take 60 elsewhere at 55. Oh. 60 here on the huh? net. All still out in front. 60 all done. Go on, That's get the hammer down. They're away at 60 pounds we sell. Another break even on a lovely piece of silver. That will do. Nicely. Excellent. Well done. I'm, I'm shocked about that. It's not a day for silver in Newcastle. No. Yeah. Maybe Yolanda's beloved early Meccano set will get a bidding frenzy on the go. 
Is this a big collector's? Meccano's very collectible. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit like the spoon collectors. There are people sitting in their rooms <laughs> all around the world <laughs> watching the screens <laughs> buying Meccano. <laughs> 25 bid, 30 bid. Come on. 35 against you, Internet. Come on, Come on Internet. 35, you bidding in front. I've got 35 pounds. 40 bid. 40 here first. Come on. Internet's out. No. Pounds for 40 pounds for the lot. Take five, another bit of shopping. Come on. At 40 pounds, all sure. That's a crying shame. What a bargain. Oh. Oh, surprising. surprising. Gareth and Raj look so I mean, upset for us. They've got no taste. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Seriously, they've got no taste. I mean, you heard it with the cogs, the wheels, the nuts, <laughs> I think the bus. <laughs> if you'd sold it, it would have flown. He had no I enthusiasm, had that guy. He had nothing for uh, <laughs> Gareth's big gamble buy is next. The pair of early 20th century children's toys. My instinct would be that they are more modern, but I haven't seen them. No, you'd have to see okay, them yeah. to know that. You can't really say that without seeing them. Well, I can't like You can. He didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> he just did. <laughs> Opening up on the internet at £160. No! Excuse me? Ten more from the room. Very good. 160 yeah. here. The book's out. I've got 160 on the net. Oh. All done in front. At 170, we're not done yet. That's wow. amazing. Wow. Online. 170. Last call, internet. At 170. Oh. They sell away at 170 all day. A bit more. £170, this will be the price. Blimey, this is just what the bidders are looking for. I'm happy yeah, with that. That's it's good. just a shame That's you nice. can't ride them, but, you know, never mind. They were big, they're, yeah. They're yeah. Someone's going to be very disappointed, aren't they, when they turn up? <laughs> it's it's like they haven't delivered. Come yeah. on, Simon! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <It's a> little... <laughs> Yolanda's rather cool but risky big buy radiogram is next. I love this. I mean, I, would, I wanted to buy it for myself, then I realised that I was on the Antiques Road trip. Honestly, I think this is going to win the day. I think this is oh, going to win. Yeah, this is a good purchase. I bid £40 straight away. 40? And he advanced 40. Come on. 40. Tell him it works! Room, surely now at 40 pounds bid. Oh, he come on. Room. Tell him it works! Stands then at £40 all down. No! This is your last chance. Last call here. At £40, we sell at 40 Yep, the hipsters went in town today, Yolanda. You did say, Gareth, if you won, you'd give us a bit of a song. Finch, That's what you're getting. Well, it was, it. It was worth it. losing <laughs> for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could have been a right. bit longer, mine, Gareth, couldn't it? <laughs> I know. Oh, you have to pay extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to my agent. Do I hear 30? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a fiver. Actually, I'm a tenner. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 you tell him, Gareth. <laughs> Yolanda and David began with 400 smackers. After all auction costs, they made a loss of £87.80p. And Gareth and Raj also had a sum of £400 and made a profit of £18. They end with £418, exactly making them today's triumphant winners. And that little bit of profit goes to children in need. Well, Yolanda, this has been a blast. Oh, it really has, Gareth. It's our favourite no, new hobby. honestly, I am fully, fully converted. It's great. I don't think I'm going to persuade my children that going to antique shops is fun. Oh, mine are coming. I'm going to try really hard. Mine are coming. <laughs> Same time next week? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. You betcha. Bye-bye. And we'll miss you.